Amen, amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord once again. Some folk didn't make it this morning, but we are here and we are happy to be here. If you are a visitor for the first time here at the Parkway Church of Christ, you are special. Please let us know if you uh, have any questions concerning the sermon lesson or why we worship the way we worship. We'll be in the back back there at the end of worship services, and you can certainly ask myself or one of the elders. We, I do have w- just a couple, couple of announcements, announcements before we get into our sermon lesson. Next Sunday, I will, n- I will not be preaching here. I was invited to speak in Elk Grove. Many of you know that uh, Gavin and the, the youth are headed to camp next week, so I'll be over there. Brother Stanley has arranged Brother Leo Martin from Valley View to come and be the guest speaker next Sunday. On the fifth Sunday, our beloved Derek Johnson will be preaching. (laughs) And we are excited about that. They're bringing me in as a guest song leader. (laughs) There may be a special treat that Sunday as well. There may be another guest song leader. But, you know, it's been, I, I, I don't think I've done a full song service since 2019. So it's, it's been a minute. But uh, I'm pretty sure we can figure it out, right? <laughs> Amen. So we're certainly looking forward to the fourth Sunday as well as the fifth Sunday. And uh, other than that, I don't have any uh, additional announcements. I want to get into the word. But before we do, I do want to just, you know, just take a minute or two just to turn to our neighbor and say good morning. God bless you. Happy to see you. <coughs> And we'll sing a song. I see you, my brother. I see you there. <coughs> Testing. This up? This up? This What's up, Chris? Testing. Oh, there we go. There we go. This world is not my home. I'm just the passing through. My treasure is all laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and no, I can't in this world anymore. And no, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven is not my home, what will I do? You know the angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and no. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their song the sweetest praise drift back from heaven. And no, I can't.
You guys sound awesome. Amen, amen. God is good all the time. Amen, amen. Today's lesson is entitled Seasons of Life. The season of principle and the season of passage. And everyone's laughing because last Sunday, Brother Stanley preached Every few years, he presents this sermon called The Seasons of Life. Over the past week, Stanley, I've talked to a few members here today. They referenced your sermon on, on multiple occasions. And I found myself reflecting upon the seasons of life and the season that I am in. So I wanted to piggyback on your sermon. I don't have a season sermon. I, I love the topic of seasons. And you know every time you do it, I'm excited. And so this is just a bonus track. This is all that is. It's an epilogue on what was presented last Sunday. And I just want to add just a few additional things to this, this series of seasons of life and and what we can do to improve ourselves as we travel through life. I am a firm believer that you should enjoy the season that you are in. Years ago, I, we, we, we did Wonder Woman. We had a Women's Day conference here, and we had the different groups of women at different sales. We had married women and single women. We had women who had been divorced, those who had been widowed, and we made sure that the speakers could speak to each season of life that the women were in, and we did that intentionally because we need to we need to understand how to navigate the seasons we we're in, but then also we need to be able to enjoy it. And so, but but also something happened to me this week on the job that was also a trigger, and it, it's something had to be said concerning <laughs> this particular topic. I I um drove into work, drove into work, have a two-hour drive, get there, park the car, go inside to my desk, get to the desk, and I realize I forgot my water bottle. So then I go, I leave the desk, go to the car, get the water bottle, Come back to my desk. Coworker comes up to me. She says, Chris, I want to show you this, 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 this meme. She says, I want to show you this picture. It's a, it's a picture of a mug. It's got writing on it. And so she's, she's holding up her phone, and I'm like, I left my glasses in the car. <laughs> and so she just did this. You know, she just kind of like put a I'm like, no. I got to go to the car to get my glasses. I said, just read it to me. So she says, this is what the, what the mug says. It says, you know you're old when you have to turn down your stereo to park your car. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, it's too early in the morning for this. Walk back to the car. Go get my glasses. Get the glasses. Get back to the desk pick up the water bottle, I reach in the fifth pocket of my jeans. You know what the fifth pocket? To get my medication so I could take it with my water. How do you know you're over 50? How do you know that you're over 50? I'm aging. I'm aging. Ruth King teases, she teases me all the time because she's like, you always talk about age. And you do, she said, you just want to be old so bad. I'm like, no, nah, it's, just, it's just happening. It's just happening. But if we're honest and we really think about it, aging is a rite of passage. It is a rite of passage. Note, everyone does not grow old. You don't, you don't always, you know, that, that, that's not a guarantee. That's not a promise that we're going to reach 
25, 55, or 85. And so when we talk about aging being a rite of passage, we have to praise God in that, that God has allowed you to enter into a season of, of whatever age you are. Because note, there are some people who did not make it. They've dreamed of hitting 55 and 65 and 75, but the Lord called them for whatever reason. And, you know, and I speak about rite of passage because, you know, we often will think of rite of passage as being great milestones or life events that are to be celebrated. We think of birthdays and, you know, people going through puberty or going having baptisms and marriage, motherhood and fatherhood as rites of passages. But when we enter into the book of Ecclesiastes, it talks about this idea that life is short. It speaks of the, the brevity of life. And the book is blunt, it's honest, it's unapologetically um, true. And, and it, was dropped in, it was dropped into my lap, you know, a few months ago, I was talking to Dr. Jesse Trice about something, and he said, Chris, he said, you know, you're complaining about your, your weight, he's complaining about your, you always needing glasses. Jesse said, you know, he said, you know, you're, it's all downhill after 35. <laughs> I'm 53. I'm, I'm the prime of my life. He says, no. He says, no. He says, no, you're, you're not. You know, <laughs> so uh, and we're going to talk about that just shortly. But, but this is this idea of, of this. So Ecclesiastes is, is, is a book that's part of a collection of books that are called wisdom literature or the, the, the wisdom literature of the Bible. You got uh, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes is in there, Job, the Song of Solomon, Psalms is often categorized in this, this conversation about wisdom literature. And let me just say this, you need wisdom. You don't, you don't realize how much you need until you don't have it. You know, you run into a situation where it requires discernment, requires a, a decision to be made, and you're going to wish you knew how to navigate that question. And so the Ecclesiastes writer is Solomon, and, and he's wrestling with certain things in his life. The book is almost written like an autobiography of his life and how he squandered God's blessings on his own personal pleasure instead of God's glory. And so the book comes, it, the, way it's unpa the way it unpacks itself is this. It unpacks itself almost like a warning message. You know, he writes it in the spirit of don't try this at home or, or try this at your own risk. But we all agree that Solomon's considered to be one of the most wisest people who ever lived. And if he's given us a nugget of information in God and his word that do, do not do these things or to do these things, we should take heed to that. And so today what we want to do is talk to two different groups of people who are in attendance today. There's two groups of people who are here today, and, and the way we want to kind of just break this or demarcate the two groups is to look at the Center of D Disease Prevention, the CDC, the Center of Disease Control and Prevention. And so, still with me, right? So the CDC says this. The life expectancy for the average man is 74. The life expectancy of the average woman is 79. So let's do the math. If we were to say that the halfway point for the average man, say if, if the average the life expectancy is 74, then what would that be? 37. Jesse Trice is not wrong. I thought 50 was the halfway point. I thought 50 was the new 30. That's what I thought it was. So you say the halfway point for the average man would be 37. For women, it would be 39. Stay with me? Okay. So let's just do this to keep the math simple. 
youth is determined. Anyone under the age of 40? Older people? Over the age of 40. That's easy math, okay? We just keep, we just keep it simple, all right? <laughs> now here's a question. By showing of hands, how many of you are under the age of 40? That's a good number. Everyone else. It's <laughs> a good number of us. Be proud, be proud of the season you're in. I want to talk to the first half people first. The first half people. So, so last week, Brother Stanley presented in the Seasons of Life, his sermon, he talks about zero to 20 being the seasons of preparation. You see that, Stanley? The season of preparation, this is the season in the first 20 years of your life, you should be preparing, studying, learning, growing. Growth is experienced in the first 20 years of your life. Failure to learn in this season will impact your next generation. It's critical that you learn certain things. The big question you said, Stanley, last week was this. Who will be your God? From 0 to 20, how will you make decisions? The season of preparation, 0 to 20. Ages 20 to 40 is the season of production. We call that the season of business and babies. You are establishing and building a household for the Lord. You're teaching your children about morals, Christian values, and ethics. You're protecting your home from Satan and sin. Now note, if we took what Brother Stelly said last Sunday about 0 to 20 and then 20 to 40 and bundled that into one big season, we would call that the season of principle or the season of prime. If you're under 40, you are in the prime of your life. And life is new, life is exciting, youth is a, listen, youth is a season of life. Full of firsts, first love, first kiss, first job, under 40, first apartment, first car. People under 40 are typically more physically fit than people over 40. You look at Oli Olymp the Olympic Games, you know, there's really no one over 40 participate in those games. People are typically under 40. Professional athletes, you're looking in whether it's basketball, football, tennis, you know, they're calling you, they're calling you, they're calling you unk at 38. I mean, <laughs> and I, at 38, would run in the gym with the young people. I would do that. And then I got to a place where I was like, no. <laughs> because it's different running at 38 with 19-year-olds. It's a different game. You know, it's a, it's a different feeling the next day. Because I remember in 1920, we'll, I'll play basketball at 2 o'clock in the morning, play, get up the next day, do it again. See, you can't do that over 40. You can't do that. Different season, right? Just stay with me. But here's the point. The Ecclesiastes writer says this in chapter 12, verse 1. He says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. He says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. For the first 40 years of your life, you are in the season of principle. This is your prime season. And how you prioritize the Lord in the first 40 years of your life will often determine the trajectory for the second half. So this is the first teachable point in Ecclesiastes 12. Remember your creator in the days of your youth is your top 
priority. Now, I want to show this, I have this, this illustration I want to give you here. <laughs> Listen, the first 40 years of your life, you're trying to build a good life. This is your end game. This, this, should, be, this should be your goal. And this, this is a set of Legos here, and I, went, I wish it was bigger, but when I went to go buy the Legos, the Legos are not cheap. Some of us are on budgets. <laughs> yes, uh, these are not, this is not uh, granddaddy, this is not the typical Legos here. This is, this is a pair of shoes. <laughs> um, but we talk about the creator. We have to have the conversation about the creator. The creator of this particular set of Legos designed the structure with a vision in mind. Matter of fact, you would say they had a vision um, with the end in mind. And, and if you want to build a nice structure like this, the creator of this particular set provided a set of instructions that if you just follow the instructions, in the end you will have a nice set of Legos that look like this. You want, and listen, and this, is, and this is what we want to do in life. We want to take God's word from the creator and follow the set of instructions he's provided so that in the end we have something nice, something simple, something structured, something that, that we're pleased with in the second half. But this is first half work, family. So, so I got the Legos, and I'm, I was looking at this as an illustration, <laughs> and I said, you know what? In the first 20 years of your life, in the season of principle, you should build with the Lord. You build your life with the Lord. And what happens is this, the pieces of your life, they will snap into the right place. It'll be ordered. It'll be structured. Listen, you don't know how much you need order and structure until you don't have it. You need the word of God so that life is simple. Listen, the word of God, you know, this word, this, this Bible that we, we have, or the Bible app we have on our phones, it's designed in a way to help keep us out of trouble. And that's why we read books like Solomon and Proverbs, while we look in, at the life of Christ Jesus, so that we don't get into situations we should not be getting into. And there's help when you get stuck in a place, because we can always refer to the manual to get ourselves back on track so that at the end of life, in the second half of our lives, we have the Lord to help us in this process of building a good and healthy and contented life. This typically should be the game, the, the, the end game. We want to build with the Lord. Now, here's the problem. The problem is this. The problem is I believe most people under the age of 40 want to build a good life. I think they want something beautiful and simple. I think they want something that, you know, when you get over the age of 40, over the age of 50, you're living comfortably. That, that was always my end game. I didn't, I didn't necessarily need to be rich, but I want to be comfortable. You know, we've spent years living paycheck to paycheck. It's overrated. It's overrated, right? It's, it's, you know. So you want to, you know, so, so here's the thing. People who try to build life without the Lord, and you look at your situation, and sometimes it is all over the place. It's all over the place. The pieces is in the wrong spot, in the wrong position. It just looks, you know, you're looking at, your situation, your zero to 40, and it's just, you're just all over the place with your decision makings, with your purchases, with your finances. Just, just pieces just all over the place. You just, just random, all the randomness, you know, just, you know, and, and, and people are looking from the sidelines at your situation, and they're just like, it's just hard to watch. Because you're trying to build a life without the Lord. 
And so the Ecclesiastes writer says you have to remember God. Remember the Lord when you get off track, when, when pieces don't fit. Listen, some things you don't force. It's hard for a reason. It's difficult for a reason. And sometimes you're trying to put the square peg in the round hole and it doesn't fit. And the Word of God says, don't force it. And so here we are in this chapter, in this season, and we're trying to connect with people who are under the age of 40 so that life after 40 is stable and it's together. But these are the things you do in the first 40 years of living. And side note, let me just say this. If you build your life with the Lord, and now you're over 40, life seems to be, you're just in a good rhythm. You just align with the Lord. Do you know what you can do? You can show your children how to build with the Lord. Because they have a model to look at. And then they can show their children and their children. Now here's the problem. problem is, if you have not built strong with the Lord, and you're misaligned with the Lord, kids have no model. And now what they replicate is the mess, is the randomness, the confusion. And so this is why that first season is so critical, and why we have to really take it to heart when we read scripture that we're trying to do what we need to do to align ourselves with God and his word. Still with me? And this is the season. This is the season of principle. This is the things that we need to focus on. And this is what he is saying in verses number one. Remember now the creator in the days of your youth. Remember your creator because guess what? It's easy to forget. And this is why we take pictures. Right? We take pictures. Listen, you guys still with me? Amen. You know, I'm, I'm on social media. I have Facebook. And, you know, I have Instagram. The nice thing about Facebook is every year, is Facebook will do this thing every year. Say, uh, a year ago from today. Two years ago from today. It's got a picture of you doing something crazy or doing something with your family or some, some, some food you took a picture of a year or so to, to this day. And, and this is why we take pictures because it's easy for us to forget. We are living in one of the most distracting periods of time. We are. You think about how complicated that little le- set of Legos is compared to them little blocks we we used to get, you know, in my, in my day, we just had, we just had just regular just blocks that you had to come up with your own design. But now we're dealing with things on the internet, we have social media, we have, <laughs> we have COVID, we have all of these different things that are happening, and what happens is that if we're not careful, the Lord can be pushed in the background. And that's why we read something like Ecclesiastes 12 and 1, because you need to remember now your creator in the days of your youth, because life is a lot simpler when you're under 40. You know, you don't don't have the bills like you do when you're over over 40. All right. (laughs) That's the first half. The second half of this lesson today is the season of passing or the season of parting. Now, just to stay with me, when I gave this title to the church secretaries, they were like, you sure this is your title? I said, I know it sounds morbid, but it doesn't have to be. You're in a season whether you like it or not. Ecclesiastes 12, 1. Remember now the creator in the days of your youth before the difficult days come. 
This can also be read as a time will come or when you enter into the second half of your life. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth before the second half of your life and the years draw near when you say, listen, before you know it, the years will have flown by. I, um, well, I'll share this later on. It'll go by quicker than you think. And it says, this last part of verse 1, I have no pleasure in them. And what this is, is it's kind of written in hindsight. This is the point when you realize that you wasted your life. Realizing that the passing years have taken a toll on your life life. This is the season of passage, the season of parting. You are passing from your prime years. You're parting yourself from that. Listen, you are in a different headspace over 40. Different maturity level over the age of 40. You know what, 20 years ago, Derek, I preached a sermon. The sermon was called, Life is Not a Music Video. Because that's the goal when you're young. I was in, I was in rap groups. I was in dance groups. I, I walked around with cardboard. I did all that. I did, I, I did it all. I, was, I, was, I wanted to be in a music video, and, and I was young, and I could fall down and get up and do all kinds of cool things. But over 40, your headspace is different. You, you know, over 40, you're thinking 401Ks. You're thinking retirement. So within, within 20 years, 25 years, you're planning to retire. You're thinking, you know, I should really get into a career. Your, your children typically are at a different age than they were probably in your 30s. That's when you're in your 40s and 50s, your kids are more self-sufficient. They don't need you as much. You know, you have a little bit more independence. You know, over 40 people, we're thinking about living wills and, and, and trusts and, you know, all these different types of things. For women, you, you got right at the, you know, hitting 40, your you're, you're menopause is happening. You're right, you're right there, probably in the sweet spot of it. You know, men, it's time for you to get your prostate checked, get, get your colonoscopy. You got all these different types of things. You got to kind of get evaluated over 40. Gray hair's kicking in. You know what I'm saying? Not being morbid, being real. Because note, we all get our turn. I had my, I had my turn of being 16. It's gone. I had my chance to be 52. It's gone. We all get our turn. This is, this is, say, it's, it's fair. But note, somebody don't, they don't hit 50. And so we praise the Lord that we have the health we have for us to be here today, for, for those of us who are online to have the technology, for those of us who can sit here. Because, but here's the point, family. Here's the point. And we're going to get, we're going to go from verses 1 through verses number 7 in just a second. But here's the question. We're over 40 now. We're at the halfway point or beyond. Are you passing through life now with the Lord? Is, is God on a journey with you? You know, we talk about Sunday morning worship, but you know, when you speak about Abraham and, and Noah, you talk about individuals who walked with God. Are you walking with the Lord daily? Is he in the equation? Is he in your life's math? And these are the things we have to talk about because we want to make sure that by the time the Lord calls us home, that we're not misaligned. Last month, I preached a sermon about narratives. Narratives. We all have a narrative. We all have a story. We all have something, whether we say 
whether good things have happened to us, bad things that have happened to us, people have come and they, 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 they come and go in your narrative of your life. You've had jobs, you had, you have, you've had relationships in your story. Is God in there? We build on life. And some of us note, we didn't do well the first 20 years of life. But there's hope because we still have the Lord. We are not abandoned. He is there right there with us. So it's never too late for you to connect with the Lord, to get to, to, to do what you have to do to make sure that when he calls you home, you're ready. No one in here should fear death. No, no, no member of the church. Christ, we should not fear death. This should be a home going. All right, family? So let's talk about this just real quick. In the first half, the writer said this. He said to the young, remember now your creator. In the second half of life, he doesn't say that. But what happens is this. The Lord is going to help you to remember. He's going to remind you that he is your God and, and your time is clicking. Because the Lord will remind you through your body that your meeting with him is closer than you think. With each ache and pain of your body, the Lord is like, what's up? You better get ready. You better start thinking about it. I'm here. Listen, you can be physically fit, you can diet, have the best health care. These are all key to healthy living, to have an optimal life. However, the creator has built this body to die. The spirit will live, but this body is not going to last forever. Can I, can I teach you a word real quick? Let me teach you a word. The word is planned obsolescence. Let me tell you how I learned this word, just these two words. I'm at work. A coworker has an iPhone. I handle all the, all the electronics of the job. I work in the IT department, handle all the stuff. She says, my phone just won't keep a charge. I said, oh, so the, the battery's probably defective. You had it for a couple of years now, you know, this you know, they don't, they don't last forever, you know. And, and so I'm just talking to her, and I told her, I said, back in the day when we had blackberries, I said, in blackberries, you could just take the battery out and pop it in there, you know. It, just, it was just convenient, you know. But I said, you know, Apple came along and said, no, nah, we're going we're gonna to build the battery into the phone. You can't take it out so that every two years you got to buy a new iPhone. I'm talking to my coworker. I work with a lot of smart people. I work for engineering companies that works with neuro it's a neurology company. And the, the, the lady I'm, I'm talking to, she said, yes. Oh, I get it. She says, it's planned obsolescence. I said, planned obsolescence. I'm, I said, I wrote that down. I said, I learned a new word today. The designers of the phone said, this thing is going to have an end date. It will die. We'll put some cheap parts in it. Say that we'll, we'll put whatever we need to put in so that after two to three years, it'll just stop working. They do this with light bulbs. You know, they can make light bulbs to last 100 years. I think there's a, I think the Centennial Lamp in, in Livermore, that thing's been going on for 100 years. But they're not designed. Listen, they need you to buy light bulbs. Washing machines are designed to last for a few years. Refrigerators. We had a new refrigerator. That thing wasn't but a few years old. That thing went, went out on us. They said, well, the replacement, they said to, to replace the part would be $2,000. I was like, that's a new fridge. <laughs> yeah, if it's under warranty, right, yeah, right, right, right. So, so, but there are some things that are planned to be obsolete. Note, that's your body. Your body 
was designed to degenerate, to devolve. The creator did not create our physical bodies to stay with us forever. Instead, he gave us a spirit, and that's the part that's going to be with him. We just sang the song, this world's not my home. I'm just passing through. Listen, I know, listen, I'm attached to the living. I enjoy being alive. I ain't gonna lie. I, I, I enjoy being alive. I got a little cough, a little residual cough about I have the last two and two and a half months, but I thank God for the cough because I'm still here. I, I'm, I'm attached. I love being alive. But guess what? The day's gonna come. It's been planned that one day this body is going to become, it's going to be obsolete. And we're going to transition. No, we don't have to be afraid of it. It's just a season. Now, what happens in Ecclesiastes 12, verses 2 through 7, the Ecclesiastes writer writes in a very poetic way about how we're just passing through. And these are reminders that we are to keep the creator as a priority on our minds and on our hearts. Note, you're going to see the pattern once I start to unpack it here. But in verse number two, this is what the Bible says here. Listen, here's a question. The question is, how do you know that I'm just passing through? While the sun and the light the moon and the stars are not darkened. You know what that's talking about? He said the day is going to come when your vision is going to be impaired. We are living in a situation when you're over 40, the shot clock is ticking. You know, at the end of uh, d- December 31st, you know, Dick Clark used to have that thing in New York, that, that, ball, that ball's up there, and it's, it, it's 10, 90, the, the countdown. Listen, we're in countdown mode right now. We don't know the hour, but the countdown is, is happening. But no, this text here is talking about your vision. Your vision one day is going to be impaired. Listen, if I take these glasses off and try to read my notes, guess what? I'm squinting. I didn't have this prime at 15. Your, your vision dams, the world blurs. Your impaired vision typically is the first sign of the aging, say, uh, of, of aging. Can't find the remote. Matter of fact, the second half of the verse says, and the clouds do not return after the rain. The clouds is talking about depression. It's talking about problems. Over 40 problems don't look like under 40 problems typically in most cases. Return after the rain are the tears. It's the storms. Verse 3. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble. You know what the keepers of the house that the keepers of the house are your hands and your arms that protect the body. They no longer become trustworthy because they tremble. Listen, you still with me? Listen. The day will come, you say your hands and your arms will tremble. You ain't shaving. <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't shaving with those, with those hands. Those, there was a time... Remember the time when you were young, you would swing on people? <laughs> you know, over 40, you, you, you don't want that smoke no more. You don't, you don't trust your hands and your arms to defend you. They're going to they get weak. Keepers of the house. Listen, you can't trust your hands to catch you if you fall. Up to a point, how do you know you're passing through? The strong men bow down 
That's your feet and legs. These are like the supporting pillars of the entire body. They weaken. Legs fall victim to arthritis. I have an old sports injury. I was playing basketball at Hayward State. Jumped up, landed awkward. Tore my ACL. I kept kept playing on it. You know, Joshua kept playing. Messed up the car. Got the surgery done. Felt great. Kept playing for years. Look, three or four years ago, went to the doctor. Went to the doctor for one thing. (laughs) <laughs> he said, he said, is there anything else? So I said, well, I got this, my knee sometimes kind of got this clicking thing going on. I don't know what's going on exactly about. Took me an x-ray. He said, you got severe arthritis in both your knees. The old sports injury from the under 40 season caught up with me in the over 40 season. The strong men will bow. He says, you probably, when you grow older, he says, you probably become bow legged. <laughs> the strong men bow down, feet and legged arthritis. You still with me, Miss Talking? I'm just trying to keep it real because the writer of Ecclesiastes is being very blunt and just being real about the situation and the scene here. Listen, I despise running, I used to love to run. Ran a mile, four minutes, 30 seconds. That was fast, man. Yesterday, open the refrigerator, an egg. That was, at the, I guess it was sitting in the top of the refrigerator. It fell on the floor. I was like, oh, man. So now I got to get down. <laughs> I got to get And I, and, you know, under 40, you just go down there and just get it, right? You get down and just wipe it, you know. I had to hold my hand on something. And, and going down is easier than getting up. You got a bad knee. Listen, the Lord's going to remind you. The Lord, the Lord is reminding you with your body. Listen, you are, go, you are going to have to remember me because the meeting's coming. The one on one is happening soon. Get ready. What's the next verse say? Let me move. I was trying to be out of here by 12.30. Um, How do you know you're passing through? When the grinders cease because they are few. What's that? (laughs) Your molars. Your molars. molars. Listen, they're not strong enough for a crown. They're turning into dentures, the veneers, they're falling out. It's just a reminder you're passing through. And those that look through the windows grow dim. Your eyes again. The shades of eyesight are pulled down. This is, this is how you know you're growing old. You don't drive at night. <laughs> you do not drive at night. You, you, you end by 7 p.m. That's, that's how you know, because you can't see in the dark. The, the shades are pulled down. My, my mother and father, if they, they come visit us, they, they want to be back before it's dark. They'll, come, they'll be gone by 3. <laughs> Things just grind. To a halt. They're not in the streets after seven. How do you know you're passing through? When the doors are shut in the streets. What's that? When the doors are shut in the streets. That's your lips. That's your mouth. See, you grow to an age where you just tired talking. <laughs> you ain't got nothing to say. You at one point in your life, you had a lot of stuff you want. You was a critic. You, you had all kinds of things to say. You get to a point in your life, I done used up all my words. <laughs> Learn how to keep your mouth shut. Just grew tired of it. How, you have to be. See, these are the reminders that we're just passing through. And the sound of grinding is low. What's that? What's that? 
when the sound of grinding is low. So some say ears. This is, this is how I, I inter- interpret it. You, you don't, you're losing your appetite. You don't, you don't hear yourself eating anymore. You there, Archie? The sound. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. He, was that you? That's quick. You, you don't hear yourself chew anymore. Under 40, you're, you these little kids, they're chewing, they're humming. They're doing <laughs> over 40, you don't hear none of that. You have no appetite. You don't need as much food as you did. We're just passing through. When one rises up at the sound of a bird. Well, yeah, you're right, Stanley. It's, it's when you become a light sleeper. I didn't get this, but, you know, my, my mother-in-law, she, she, you know, when she, when she was alive, she stayed with us. And, and, you know, one time I got up in the middle of the night, it was like her light was still on under the door. I'm like, she's still up, you know. And, you know, the, the whole week was like that. I said, you know, they say when you, the older you get, the less sleep you need. Is that true? But the, but the translation is that the sound of a bird chirping outside will wake you up. You're a light sleeper. Light sleeper. I was talking about the sound of grinding is low. I had put in here just as a note that you were, you were once a foodie, but now you're a moody. I put that in there. Because <laughs> I love to eat. I love to eat. And, and if it impacts my mood. And you get to a point where the food doesn't fix it. Um, and, the, and all the daughters of music are brought low. That's hearing. Listen, your favorite jam comes on the radio. You don't. You don't know because you can't hear it. <laughs> Use music to your ears. You have to repeat yourself. You have to repeat questions. What you say? What you say? Also, they are afraid of height. So how many of you over 40, this is probably the much older group, but, but just to say, you, you don't like stairs. Don't like stairs. You despise stairs. You avoid stairs. You know, I remember when I was under 40, I remember back being 16, 16 jumping off of roofs. Climb, climb up on the roof, jump off the roof. Jumping off of bridges, overpasses, we did all kind of wild things. That's why my body hurt today. <laughs> <laughs> it says this too, it says, and the terrors, verse number five, um, also they are afraid of height. And the terrors in the way, you'll be afraid of tripping over every small thing in your path. Do you use these little communion cups? Because y'all don't took the communion cups. I think you picked them up now, right? We didn't always do that, but, you know, have one on the floor. You see it. Oh, no. You walk away. (laughs) See a paper clip. Oh, no. You know, kind of get around it. Because you don't want to fall. You laugh because it's true. You, I could not tell you the last time I fell. I just know I don't want to. Sri had this little, she had this little scooter thing. She, I dropped her off at school. She was, she was five, six years old. Dropped her off at school. Walked to the house. She said. Could I bring her s- little scooter to s- to the school so she could ride it back home? And so, sure, I got the little little I'll the little Hello Hello Kitty scooter. I took it and I was walking to her school. I said, "I'm gonna try this out." <laughs> got on, I think did that thing a couple times. I think I said, "Dad, <laughs> I picked it up. I picked that thing up." Because I said I almost fell. I said I could I could not tell you the last time I fell down, but I knew it would have hurt. 
the tears along the way. I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. Here's, here's one since you guys like this particular uh, passage. When the almond tree blossoms. You ever see an almond tree? What's, what, what color are the leaves? They're white. The white. The white kicks in. When your gray hair takes center stage, the grasshopper is a burden. Two ways in which you can interpret this, this and this just reminds us we're passing through. When the body gets stiff, you see, grasshoppers are not, they're not like snakes. They don't do this. Grasshoppers, they're kind of like, more, they're more stiff and rigid. But really what this is, is the smallest things bother you. Small things. You know, I got chains and batteries in my remote. You know, the small things, you know, I know the doorbell rang, it bothers you. <laughs> if the phone rings, it just it annoys you. Grasshopper is a bar and desire fails. This is this is your libido. You think about your drive under 40, your drive over 40. It's two different drives. <laughs> two different drives. This is just, just different. Matter of fact, children. typically are in the scene under 40 in terms of birthing them. What else we got going on here? For man goes to his eternal home. And the mourners go about the streets. And this is the time when your body is failing you and your family members and your friends, they're, they're watching you fade before them. And they start making arrangements. People flying into town. And they're telling other people, nah, man, any day now. The text says this, remember your creator. Before the silver cord is loose, this is life itself. Or the golden bowl is broken. This is your brain. This is when dementia sets in. You or you can't just keep your thoughts. Your mind is slipping away. You're looking for a pair of glasses that are in your that are on your head. <laughs> you're looking for car keys that are in your hand, and you, but you're like, oh, but your your mind is not as sharp as it used to be. Or the pitcher shattered at the fountain. This could be heart problems, or the wheel broken at the well, losing blood. Verse seven. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was. This is when your bones become frail, break easily, physical deterioration. But this last part, family, I want us to just look at this for a second. The lesson is yours. And the spirit will return to the God who gave it. Remember Job? In Job chapter 1, verses 21, of all that he has suffered in that first initial state of losing his kids and this and that. And he says this, these words that the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When the body is done, it is the Lord who will determine your next steps. And one of the most endearing things that a child of God can experience is to have his or her spirit received by the Lord. To be received. Jesus says this about God the Father in Mark 14, 36. You don't necessarily have to turn there, but it's what he says. He says, he's praying in the garden, and he says, Abba, Father. You know, Abba, it's, it's the utterance of a young child who calls Father Daddy. It's endearing. And so, when we come to the season of the end of our lives, don't be afraid. Daddy is going to receive you. It's how you have to approach it. Heaven is not a foreign place. It's home. We come here week after week. We want to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. But we cannot avoid this topic. 
And this is the reason why when people die in the Lord, when we get a call, Stanley, to do the funeral, don't you know it's the easiest funeral to do? They died in the Lord. This is not the end. This is, uh, this is commencement. The beginning. The end is the beginning. It's a graduation. And so we have to prepare our minds, family, and our hearts that the day will come. And let's be honest, let's be real. There are no guarantees you'll see the second half. Remember now your creator. Today is the day of salvation. And Jesus does this when he's on the cross. I think it's in, I think I wrote it down, Luke, in Luke 23, 46. About the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour, the sun was darkened and the veil, the tippet was torn in two. When Jesus cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, having breathed his last it is finished. I just want to encourage your spirits today, wherever age you are in, that when the day comes, you can welcome it. Jesus said, Lord, here's my spirit, and the Lord receives it. The question is raised today, are you ready? Jesus came down and he taught people to get ready. And today is the day, listen, family, you make change. Listen, come to a place where you're tired of doing it on your own. Listen, the Lord is saying, look, look, heaven, this, this, this. We sing about mansion, robes, and crown. Don't, don't you want to be with the Lord? Today is the day you make change. And this is why we teach baptism, because with baptism, listen, you have your sins washed away. You add it to the church. You die with Christ. You rise again as a new creature. And look, and now when the Lord comes to get you, you're ready. Listen, you are in the season you are in. Live your life and enjoy it. But make sure the Lord is in the narrative. Together we stand singing our closing song. Will you come? The Spirit dwell in me, touch my heart that I might see all your goodness, grace, and power. Stay beside me every hour. Be my great, be my living bread. Keep me sheltered.